everyone, welcome back to part two. Sorry, I'm working on a different shirt, but the same concept, my, my camera turned off on me. So, <laughs> well, it, everything happens for a reason. So we're gonna do the same thing, like I said with the last video. We have the front that is already stabilized. I'm sorry, the back that's already stabilized. And we have the front that's already stabilized. This is just a different shirt, two pockets, same concept. We're gonna take both those pieces and face them together. We're gonna to kind of sandwich them together. But the next step is a very, this is my favorite part of the whole thing because this is where it's like the cherry on the top. I could finally sew this guy together. Let's sandwich them together. Make sure they lay flat. Find your corners and then this is where the, the needles come into play. So grab your needles. And you want to start with the part where the buttons meet. Okay, so take your pen and pen that down because this is a part we do not want these pieces to open up when we're sewing around the whole border. The cool part about this pillow, this is what my favorite part is, um, we don't have to add no buttons. We don't have to add a zipper. We don't have to hand stitch to finish this, this pillow up. This button here is our opening. So I can't wait to show that at the very end. So go ahead, take your time, make sure this lines up all around the corner. Doesn't have to be perfect. It might be a little bit off, what have you, it's okay. So when you start sewing along the border of this entire pillow, we want to sew with a quarter of an inch. If you don't know what a quarter of an inch is, um, it is half of a half of an inch. So I'm going to get my measuring tool out here in a minute and show you what that is if you don't know, which is okay because, you know, that's how we all learn. Um, I remember when I first started out, I had no clue. I had <laughs> uh, trial and error, try, trial and error. So make sure this lines up. Take your time. Pinning, pinning part is important because we want to make sure when we sew it, it doesn't move. It's lined up. Everything looks good. So let's go ahead and pin this guy up and we'll sew a quarter of an inch. And I'll bring my sew machine around here, here in a minute to show you what that is. Um, geez, it's so weird because I'm doing this a second time around. Um, I was so frustrated when my phone turned off. I didn't know it turned off um, when uh, until I was watching the video. I usually watch the video prior to before I upload it um, to make sure everything is perfectly fine. I do not know how to edit, so I'm, that's why I'm doing video number two. <laughs> so, well, I have you live and learn, right? One of these days, I'll learn how to edit the really cool videos that some people do. Um, so that's what I have here. So let me go ahead and finish this off. Let me bring my sew machine around for you guys. Okay, I'm back. All right, so you guys are all hopefully aware that this is one inch, two inch, three inch. So a, ha a quarter of an inch um, is... Obviously, there's one inch. Let me get my needle here. Maybe I can show you a little bit closer. So obviously, there's one inch. This here is a half of an inch. And then you want half of that. So to know on your sew machine where that's at, take your little measuring stick, see where the, the pressure foot is at, and see where that line lines up. So when you're sewing along the edges, that is what your measuring is. Most sew machines has a little red dot on there. So what you need to do is start with, I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna zoom in here in a minute. Uh, let's bring my sew machine down, I mean my uh, camera down here some for you guys. Um, I'm gonna start sewing where the buttons start. Obviously you're not gonna be sewing on a button because when you measure, you measure the button down there. Because um, I wanna start there because I wanna make sure that I backstitch where this is opening is at. We do not want this opening to have an issue. So, because when they open this up to put the new pillow insert in, this is the likely place where it will rip open at some point, and we don't want that. So let's make it extra durable. So put your needle down, and go ahead and double back stitch. So I use your back stitch button if you have one. If you don't, um, you could always take it out and put it back in. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and back stitch a few here, and then go back again. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna go ahead and sew a quarter of an inch to the very end here. So let me go ahead and do that and tell you what you can do next. Now some people, they like to um, like take it to the very end and then turn the fabric. I don't recommend doing that when you're making a pillow. Only because when you're doing that making a pillow, uh, you want your corners to be just as durable as well. Because this is a pillow, it's something people are gonna use. It's gonna be out and, uh, wear and tear. Take out the thread 
and start again from the corner um, and back stitch. You want to back stitch that section because we want those corners adorable too. We want this pillow to last a long time. So when you're making this special thing, you want it to be, you know, durable. We want it to work and you people have this for a long time. So go ahead and sew along the edge a quarter of an inch and finish that up and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. All right, so I sewn around the edge a quarter of an inch. Me, I recommend sew along another line around the entire border again. Now, even though you want a quarter of an inch there, I would go another quarter of an inch down um, and sew a second line all the way around. This here ensures durability. So whenever they open and close this pillow to bring in and out an insert, we want to make sure that it's extra strong. So let's make this extra strong. So go ahead and go around again. Like I said, you want to uh, backspace, um, backspace or um, reverse uh, your stitches in any type of opening and section. So I'm going to go ahead and do that really quick. Okay. I double stitched it. Um, I went around the border twice as you guys can see. Um, and now all you have to do is take out all your pins, guys. Let's take them all out. Make sure you take uh, scissors and cut off on each corner the, the loose threads and everything else like that. Um, and I will show you as we turn this guy inside out. Um, sorry, right side out. <laughs> I'm saying it wrong. I'm going to take the corners, take those cute little threads and remove them. So remove those, make sure it's all pretty on the inside, just as pretty as it is on the outside. So get all those loose threads out of there. Um, check your stitch work, see if it's okay and all that. Um, and let's uh, undo this guy. So you're like, okay, what do I do next? How do I like turn this guy right side? So you remember, you have those buttons. Undo the buttons. It's going to be backwards, but whatever. It opens right up. So that is our opening into our pillow to put a pillow insert in. So open up those buttons. Now, just turn these guys inside out. I mean, right side out, because this is inside out. Um, turn the corners in and bring it out, guys. This is the best part. This is the part where now we're gonna get that pillow insert and we're gonna measure and see if this fits snug. Now, if it's still a little loose, just sew another length around there, another quarter of an inch till where it fits snugly. So I have a feeling it's gonna fit just fine. So let's go ahead and looks like I forgot to do some threads here. Whoopsie daisy. Forgot the other side. <laughs> Make sure you get all the threads. Otherwise those threads are crazy annoying. Um, my bobbin ran out in the middle so I had to remove the bobbin. It's always something with sewing. It's almost, it reminds me like fishing. It's always something. All right, so I'm gonna shake this guy right off. Look at that. I need to iron those uh, pockets down. So there we have it. You're like, look, oh, look at that. Wait till you put the pillow inside now. That's the best part. So now you need to take a tool, either if it's a, a, a pencil or you can use a, a butter knife, what have you. But I have this handy dandy tool. Um, you want to take the corners and push them through a little bit so they get kind of pointy. We want to point out those corners. So point out those corners really quick. And then let's grab a pillow. So I'm going to grab a pillow off my couch that I know is exactly 18 inch. My iron's still a little hot. I'm, it's going to drive me nuts knowing those pockets are popping out. <laughs> oh, me and my OCD of perfection. Oh my God. Um, so, okay, let me go grab a pillow really quick. Okay, I am back. Here is my couch pillow. I need to lift this up so I'm not so close. Move my sewing machine out of the way. Move my coffee. All right, so this is an 18 inch pillow. I'm just gonna open up. Looks like I got another button there. Hang on there. Hold my horses. All right, so let's go ahead and stuff this guy and see what it turns out to be. This is so much fun. Wait till you see when you put the pillow in. It's it's almost like you're dressing a pillow. <laughs> ah, see, and you don't have to add buttons, you don't have to add a zipper, you don't have to hand stitch nothing. This thing is easy. So, all right, so now let's button this guy up. Find those cute buttons. See, perfect. Now, if you feel like it's not snug enough, and starting your look at, see, you got another button there. Come back to me, button. All right. So if you find it, you think it needs to be a little bit more snug, or maybe the pillow had loosened up over time, you can sew one more line around until it fits snug. That's why I suggest 
start out at a quarter of an inch when you sew along um, and then add you know if it needs to be a more, another quarter of an inch sew another quarter of an inch um, but start small look at we got one more I think the mailman's here all right so there we have it look how adorable that is oh my gosh let me have to raise my camera here again Oop, I'm going down adorable so now let me go ahead and grab you the quilt and the other pillow that i did that i had to redo the uh <laughs> video on and show you the quilt i made that these uh shirts go to isn't that adorable look at that so look at the buttons see like i said when you lined up when you cut them you want to make sure that those buttons line up to where you're not sewing on those buttons and you got two cool pockets like I said, you can have these pockets embroidered if you want to. That's another video. I just wanted to get you guys the basic, simple, easy way to quilt together a memory pillow, which is awesome for a little boy's bed, which is awesome for a memory pillow for a loved one, um, or just for holiday dec decor. I mean, you could cover up your pillows in your couch for Christmas if you want to do a Christmas shirt or something like that. You could do it with sweaters, what have you. Just use that stabilizer. Let me grab that quilt and show you guys really quick. Okay, I am back. Here is the quilt I made for Mr. Little Ziggy. It's a twin size bed quilt. It's shirts and clothing from a family member. And um, it is the pinwheel pattern, even though you can't see the pinwheel in it, if you kind of see it, if you step back a little bit. Um, but it's just different pieces of clothing and stuff like that. I still need to hand stitch the binding. The inside is equally gorgeous. Look at this. I had the long arm service done to it, so it uh, has different patterns. So this is gonna withstand a whole lot of washings, which is awesome. So little Ziggy's gonna absolutely love it. It's just beautiful. I used, I chose brown uh, for the binding. I need to adjust it. I wanted the thick, fluffy binding. Um, so I usually, I hand stitch my binding. I like to uh, stitch it through. So that's probably, I'll do a tutorial on how to hand stitch binding, especially you can use that in your journaling as well, how to do a hidden stitch and all those kind of things. But there is the uh, quilt, which I won't open the whole thing. At least you guys have the idea. And then here's the pillows. So these will go on his bed. So they got like the woodland theme. Let me see if I can zoom this up for you guys a little bit. There you have it. Um, so there we got pillow number one. Sorry the camera's shaky. Today is now my day with working on the camera. Um, and then pillow number two for his bed. Um, I think his mom's going to be happy and surprised and love it. So I think what I'm going to do, like see this one's kind of like a hidden. You can't even see where the pocket is. But um, I think I'm going to put like some kind of letter from me as the nanny to him. Again, like when you do your pockets and when you do your, your shirts, like this one here, it doesn't matter where the pocket's at. You can't really see it. So when you cut the piece, when you measure, if you want the pocket to be shown, make sure that pocket, when you cut this, this piece out, the pocket's a little bit lower. I think the pocket should be about right here. This one doesn't really matter. It's not meant to be seen. Sort of like when I did this one here, when I measured my, my square, I made sure that the pockets were in a location that's good. This one here, I think I might add some, a car or two, cause he's a little munchkin. He's still on his, he's gonna be in a toddler bed. So it's perfect. All right, so I'm glad you guys loved the tutorial. I hope I made it quick and easy. Sorry I had to make it in two videos. It so happens that life is the way it is. So now you have it. You need simple little things. You need a, just a, a, a yardstick, some scissors, um, and an iron, and uh, obviously a sew machine, and go for it, man. You guys got this. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys curate, and I hope this encourages you guys to make something for something special for a loved one or just to teach you how to make a pillow without even having to add a zipper or buttons. This one here already has it. So there you have it. I hope you guys try one. Have a great day. Bye.